everybody. Welcome back. We're going to do this again because, well, we had some audio issues and now they're fixed. So the real estate news, well, it's breaking the internet and there's a lot of information out there that, well, some of it's hype, some of it's mostly accurate, but the goal is to get you the best information. So subscribe, like, and share, because here's the thing. We deal with only what's local. We don't care what's happening in Arizona. We don't care what's happening in Texas or Florida or, you know, any of the other crazy states like Las Vegas where, you know, things just aren't going quite as well. Anyway, so when we take a look at that here, let's come up there. Make sure you subscribe just because it's fun. Uh, really what it does is it tells us what the heck is going on uh, in the market. It allows you to be able to be updated when it happens. Plus, uh, you know, for other people that are really looking for solid information consistently, this is the best place to get it. And well, we're pretty accurate, all things considered. So let's move on. When we take a look at the market, we take a look at our seven day running average. You can see we had 1,138 new homes on market. We had 1,237 that actually went pended, 869 that sold. Well, look at this. We've got 607 that reduced in price. Why? They missed the message to market. Listen, buyers do not present offers on overpriced homes. They used to, they don't now. You need to get down into the price at a point that they would consider before a buyer in today's market actually presents. I know, sellers, that is completely different than what it used to be. I get it. But it is what it is. And when we take a look at when is a good time to start looking at it, listen, you're going to get the most amount of dollars in the first seven days. Statistically proven, your home sells in the first seven days, you get between 100 and 107% of list price. If you miss that mark, you need to start considering a different price point. If you're getting 40, 50 showings between an open house and showings on your home, and you are not getting offers, you are three to five percent overpriced right off the bat. Just telling you statistically, that's what you need to look at. And buyers know this; they are super, super smart. All right, moving on. When we take a look at our next chart here, you can see that we actually have higher interest rates than where we were at this time last year. All right, but what's super interesting is you just saw when we come back to this chart right here, right? You can see that our pended is higher, meaning there are more pended homes than new homes coming on market. Now, last week was a little different. That was the second time since the middle of October of 2022 that the new on market exceeded the number of homes that went pended. It, historically, it's for every home that comes on market, between one to two homes are going off market, okay? We are very close. I mean, we're 1138 versus 1237. That's pretty close. Now, weeks before, for every home that came on market, two homes went off market. That is what is helping giving us price support on what we are doing on a weekly basis as we're evaluating this. Now, if we take a look at these numbers, take a look at this. Our biggest stretch year to date is the fact that we have 23,000 less homes new on market. We have 15,000 less homes that have sold and then, of course, as you can see, we're about 12,000 homes short appended. And then when we look at that, the same month over month, you can see that those numbers are translating forward. So less inventory has had an adverse effect. However, it has also had a positive effect because it has given us continued price support. We are still seeing multiple offers on well-priced homes. Keep that in mind. So as you are a buyer... Homes that have been on market a little bit longer, huh? I think there's some uh, some opportunities that are definitely there. For sellers, you just need to understand, we are price takers, not price makers. Buyers actually make the price. They're the ones that say, this is where the value of your home is in today's market. Now, it doesn't mean that our market has come down in value. There's just less homes for them to choose from, and we're transitioning between mortgage rates. So when we take a look at different options as far as what is available to a buyer today, hey, there's, it's super skinny. We should have four to six months of inventory for a balanced market. Right now, eh, we're about one, 1.3 months. That is 
that's just not a lot of homes to consider. All right, moving on. All right, when we take a look at our next slide here, so this is the REO side, and that stands for real estate owned, right? We have four homes, four new, 12 sold, and 25 different on number of homes that are pended. When you look at these numbers, these are, these are horrifically low numbers, horrifically low. What is the value of that to you? It just lets you know, say, hey, listen, homes today, homes today are not what we were seeing as far as in 2008 through 2010, as far as REOs, bank-owned homes. We don't have that inventory. We don't have hundreds and thousands of homes across Washington state. You saw, we only have, what, 45? And some of those aren't even real uh, because six of them are what I call the, <laughs> the wall of shame, where agents have inadvertently marked their normal sellers as bank owned, which doesn't help their seller much, but it excuse our, our numbers here a little bit. All things considered, these are tiny, tiny, tiny little numbers. And in fact, most lenders will market their home at market value after do some very basic uh, fix ups because we're still one of the five sweet spots across the United States. So if you're thinking, oh, I need to buy a foreclosure because I can get great deals and I see these books on tape people and they're awesome. It's hogwash, it's hooey. We haven't seen that since 2013 and that is not going to come across or change anytime soon. We do not have enough inventory, just saying. All right, moving on. When we take a look at our next chart here, this is our new construction chart. Now look at this, this is amazing. We're only 52 homes off year over year as far as inventory, 412 more than we had last year, but we're only 281 homes less in inventory. But look at this, 1,284 homes pended. So our pended as we're waiting for homes to finish, in fact, we've got a couple of clients closing here this month that are waiting, boop, and then they will close. So our end of year number should turn out really well. And uh, new construction is without a doubt propping up the inventory, propping up the sales and, and helping to maintain prices. If you're looking for really great opportunities, hey, they are just about in front of you right now. There's still a ton of incentives. Make sure you're working with an agent who understands new construction and how to get you additional incentives of what are out there. Because, well, naturally builders aren't gonna tell you. You just need to have somebody who's experienced who knows that and can help you with it. Moving on, all right. What's super important after that? When we take a look at uh, Oktoberfest, nine epic <laughs> opportunities. And Oktoberfest is a ton of fun. Whether you drink or not, doesn't matter, right? Uh, it is a just an absolutely amazing time. And in fact, we will post the link down below and uh, let you know of these really great places. So you've got uh, the Rhine House uh, on uh, the 16th, on the 22nd to the 24th in Fremont, uh, the same thing in Kirkland. You've got the 22nd through the 24th as far as their Oktoberfest goes. Tons of fun. Those are local. Uh, McMinnimans, they have theirs on the 23rd. And then, of course, you know, you've got uh, the Leavenworth Oktoberfest, which is without a doubt the most amazing Oktoberfest event uh, in Leavenworth. And that is from the uh, September 29th to the 14th. Get out there, just have some really good times. It's a really great opportunity. They have great food. And you know what? Uh, it's, uh, you, you don't have to do it. The commute's a lot faster than, than, go, than going to Germany. All right. So with that, make sure that you guys like, subscribe, and share. Listen, uh, again, there's no selling here. It's just really great information. Keep asking the questions and uh, share this link with the people that you know so that, well, at the end of the day, they can get really good decision-making uh, information. In the meantime, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.